Now, over 11,500 men die from prostate cancer in the UK each year, but many of those lives could be saved if the cancer was spotted early on. The Father's Day Prostate Cancer UK has teamed up with female celebrities whose lives have been affected by the disease. One of them is TV presenter Jenny Powell, who lost her father to prostate cancer uh, in July of last year. Thank you so much for coming in. I know it's in, it's in difficult circumstances, but tell us a bit about your dad, because there, there weren't any symptoms there, is that right? No, not at all. I mean, he was, uh, I think it was about 89 at the time, so he was older, uh, but he had no symptoms whatsoever. And um, luckily for where he lived, they had like a yearly MOT, my, my mother and my father, um, hence they had blood tests, etc. And, oh, look at him there. <laughs> I did adore him. <laughs> and um, it came up in the blood test that maybe he should possibly go and have some PSA testing for prostate. And that's when we found out. But still, uh, three, four years later, um, it was only then that, you know, mm. it got really bad um, during COVID, really. You know, sort of didn't help. And you've taken part in this film. Has that yes. helped you talking to, to other people, that sort of shared experience? Yeah, because I've, I've, I've not really spoken about it, of course. And then, of course, you do it in the most sort of like public arena. <laughs> yes, do this this big video that's going to go on the show for everybody and you get to gonna talk to people like you. But um, it's been, it's actually been really useful. I actually welled up when I was talking about it because I'm a big talker, all this and that. And then when I get there, I was like, oh, and it hit me. Mm. Um, but it was really good to talk and really good. To, they're very different experiences. We had Arabella Chi, who's from Love Island. I think I don't watch it, but anyway. Um, so she had a, her dad and her uncle actually um, are still here, live and kicking. Um, and I think it was because of her dad being diagnosed that then her uncle went to be tested um, or screened. And um, that's um, saved both their lives, really. And then we had uh, Katie McGlynn. You know Katie? Lovely Katie, Yes, yeah. her grandfather um, passed away with prostate as well. So she had a very different story again. Mm. Um, but really it's interesting because we had such a different angle on it. It's three women talking about mm. it, you know, and the ripple effects of it. And also women talk, men don't talk, <laughs> men don't want to go to the doctors, you know. And we're, we're really there to sort of raise awareness um, for people out there, like yourself, any, you know, it can mm. it hit you at any age, more often over 45, really. Um, just that, you know, you might be at risk. And there are certain sort of categories of, of people who, who are more likely, uh, like my brother, I know I'm talking too much, but I'm just no, going to tell not, you. You're... So my brother's perfect for this and getting screened because he is um, 65, so over 50. He's also South African, so certain ethnicities um, are more likely to get it, it as well. It ticks all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if you've had anyone in the family who's had it, of course, my father. Mm. So um, it's really, I just, just really want people to realise that, you know, you might not have symptoms, but, you know, if, you, if you're worried or even if you're not, maybe check up at the doctors. Can I ask you, you say you've, you've, you know, you've, you've got a lot to say about it. How have you dealt with the whole issue of, of grief? Because this is the first close family member of yours that you've lost, isn't oh, it? Dan, this is so interesting. This, is like, this has been a, a revelation to me because, I don't know, until it happens to you, the whole grief... Then grief is going to happen to everyone eventually mm. and it's quite late in life for me for someone close to me to actually pass away because I'm 54. I know you don't believe it, but I am. And um, it's... <laughs> just when you think you can cope with everything, this comes along. Mm. Um, and everybody in my family's dealt with it very differently. Um, and for me, it's the one thing you've got to realise is it changes you. You know, it does change you. Um, and that's the thing that you have to then deal with and you have to work around it and uh, just readjust. Mm. Um, and it could just hit you like that. And one of those readjustments is getting used to anniversaries and birthdays. Yeah. And I imagine Father's Day this weekend, which is why you're here, this yeah. is your first one without your dad, which is going to be incredibly difficult. Yes, uh, but I, I still want it to be a positive thing, mm. you know, because, um, like I say, we're, we're doing a positive thing, you know, trying to raise funds for screening programmes. That's the thing we need, you know, if everyone can be screened. It's all right for women, because, well, it isn't, but, you know, we talk about mm. it more and there's more screening for yeah. women. But we want that, and... Um, I want it to be a positive thing on Father's Day, uh, and I'm going to light a candle, yeah. And I'm going to look for white feathers anywhere. That's the grief <laughs> thing as well. You look out for all these sing signals like white feathers. I saw a robin, you know, this, and, it, and there's all sorts of things that just make you feel like they're all around, and they are. Well, thank you very much for coming in and sharing some memories about your dad, it's and I hope Father's Day is OK for you, and thank you as well for raising awareness, Jenny. Lovely to talk to no, you. No, and you. Thank you.